Well, what's up again there? This is Brian, the, I am the Three Topics Gamer, and if you are seeing this message, then I think we both know why you are here. I would like to use these first few moments as a serious disclaimer for anyone who is a massive fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm aware that it is incredibly popular right now, and there are probably tens of thousands, if not hundreds of millions of people that enjoy these films, which is why I feel it is my duty to just give you a just disclaimer and a warning. If you clicked on this video expecting a lot of positivity, then I suggest you stop the video right now and go watch something else. This is not the video for you. Now, it's not to say that everything in this video is negative. There is a good amount of positivity, but let us just say that this is probably one of the very few videos that I have ever posted on my channel over these past seven, almost going on eight years, where I really did not want to do this video. This video is only in existence because it was voted on. Now, this is not a request for video ideas on either top 10 lists or worst of best videos, and this was one of the ideas that was sent to me, and when I put it in the post, for whatever reason, this thing won at least like 80% of the votes. And I was kind of upset. <laughs> and I didn't want to do this video because I knew what was going to happen. And I'm telling you, it's, it's me in a really, really bad mood. <laughs> and you hear it in my voice. You hear it in, 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 in my tone. I'm, I'm really, like, while recording this, I was just really pissed off, I was really annoyed, I didn't want to do this, but I had to push through because I'm obligated to do these type of videos if it is voted on. But, I will say this, if you must watch some part of this video, I suggest you skip to that time. That is when the positive side of this video comes out, and I think that if you stick to the positivity side, you may end up walking away from this video in a good mood. But I implore you, do not watch anything before that time period. Do not. As I already know, there is going to be a lot of people that are going to be pissed the fuck off before you even get to the five minute mark. So, please, if you're an MCU fan, stop the video. But if you must continue, go to that time period. Do not watch the majority of this video. Please, I am trying to save you from a wave of negativity. Please, just, I'm, I'm trying to help you out here. Don't do this to yourself, please. I didn't want to do this, but I had to. And here we are, so... Please, st either stop the video or go to that point. Because I've already, I guess I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna give you another warning once the video officially starts. I'm gonna give you another warning of what you can expect and why you should just not watch the video. And I've disabled the, the comment section because I know I'm gonna have a lot of people come after me. And I've already disabled the, the thumbs up and thumbs, and thumbs down bar, got rid of that too. And I'm not sharing this on any of my social media posts. I'm not using any of the tags. I am trying to keep this video as quiet as possible. I'm trying to have the least amount of people see this video. I'm trying to keep this video under the radar so that maybe people don't notice it and I'll just maybe just forget it ever exists. So with this warning out of the way, just st skip all the negativity. Just, just, just get it. Go there. Don't, don't watch the rest, please. So you've been warned. Do not come after me with your torches and pitchforks. I'm warning you. Do not do this. That's all I gotta say. So, whatever happens after this is your own doing. So, well, what's up again there, guys? Brian D. Three Topics Gamer here, and I have a pretty interesting worst to best video idea because voted by you guys, some of you, or a good number of you, asked me to pretty much go over the worst to best entries in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, before I begin, this video is going to be a little bit different and a little bit controversial because for this particular video, I've done something that is 
quite rare on my channel, and I, I hope everyone understands. For this particular video, I've not only disabled the comments section, I've actually disabled the thumbs up and thumbs down bar, because I'm pretty sure this is probably going to want to be one of the most hated videos I've ever done. And as a disclaimer, if you happen to be a massive fan of the MCU, I would really suggest you stop watching the video now, because most of this video is pretty negative towards the MCU, with only a small fraction of the films actually being, in my opinion, good to great to even phenomenal, which, trust me, the MCU was pretty damn rare. Now, before I start getting attacked by the MCU fanboys, I would just like to let all of you guys know that I am by no means a DC EU fan. Out of all the films that have come out this year, or technically that have come out to this date, only two of them, I think, are worth watching, and that is Man of Steel and Aquaman. Everything else is a complete disaster, and outside of the Joker film coming out later this year, the only other movie that is coming out in the next few years that I might even consider seeing is Aquaman 2. I have no plans on seeing Birds of Prey in 2020, or Wonder Woman 1984, or the Batman with Mr. Sparkles in 2021, or the Suicide Squad in 2021, or the Flash in 2021. And who knows when the Black Adam film is going to come out. So, now that I've got that disclaimer out of the way, I think we're going to start off with the three films in the MCU that I not only have not seen, I have no plans on seeing it, and uh, there's nothing anyone can do to stop me, because heck, this is my video and I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. So, in the 21, 22, and 20 rankings, I have Ant-Man and the Wasp, Avengers Endgame, and Captain America, or not Captain America, Captain Marvel. Uh, these are three films that I just have no interest in seeing. Ant-Man, the first one wasn't all that great, so I just didn't think the second one would be really any better. Captain Marvel's got enough controversy that kept me away, and Avengers Endgame just... I just don't think I can watch it. Um, I thought I could... Um, but after my experience that I had with the first Avengers film, I decided that this is probably something I should stay away from. I, I think that, you know, I know a lot of people are excited for that film, and I just think that I should keep my negativity away from it, especially with my reaction to the end of Avengers Infinity War. So now that we've got the three films that I have not seen out of the way, let's start off with the bottom in the worst MCU film that I personally have seen. Starting off with number 19, and that was Iron Man 3. This movie had so much potential, so much build up to it, that it ended up being a complete and utter disaster once the Mandarin twist happened. I hated that so much. It is actually, to this date, the only MCU film I've ever actually walked out of. When that happened, I actually immediately walked out of the theater and... I don't even know how the movie ended. I mean, maybe I'll catch it in a clip maybe one day and see how that final fight actually played out. But that ending just ruined the entire film. So that's the number 19 spot. Going into number 18, I picked Thor The Dark World. Holy hell. This movie was just a complete and utter disaster. Um, I, I don't even really remember what it was about, but it was about some dark, some dark elves. And, um... Like, I, I don't know. Like, most of these I hardly remember. Like, some, like the majority of the, the of the films I've only seen once, and I didn't watch them again because they weren't really all that great, and they weren't really important. Because I don't think you need to see any of these films to watch the Avengers films. These are just stepping stone films for the Avengers films. Every, if it's not an Avengers film, it really doesn't matter, to at least in, in my opinion. And I just thought Thor of the Dark World was just not that not that great. Um, I don't recall the action scenes being that well. I don't recall the story being all that well. I think the only thing that happened in that was significant was Thor's mother got killed. But I thought that was even underwhelming. Um, but yeah, just Thor the Dark World just was not all that great. And that is followed up by the number 17 spot, and that is Thor from 2011. And to recite a quote that I'm, or technically to, to kind of uh, give reference to one of my favorite, uh, you know, uh, movie reviewing uh, websites, which is currently gone, called Spill.com, I could sum up my experience with Thor 2011 like this. The first, the, the first Thor of this film was, was perfectly fine. It, it, it was working well for me. But once Thor got to Earth, this movie hit fuck you territory so hard and so fast that it that the corpse of this, the, the body of this film bounces off the concrete up into barely a rental. And it, it, it just didn't, it just was just 
it didn't work for me after that point. I just could not get into it. Unfortunately, I couldn't walk out because I was sitting, I was watching this film with family and I wasn't paying, so I was obligated to sit there. But yeah, I, I really just did not like the first Thor film. Going into number 16 is probably the most overrated black movie I've ever seen, which was Black Panther. Um, I still don't know how this thing won Oscars. Um, I, I don't even remember much about this film. I, I honestly don't like Black Panther at all. I don't really know him all that well at all. I don't even know what the guy's name is. Uh, I don't know who, Bla I, like the guy, who, n not the actor, the guy that played the Black Panther. I don't know his name. I, I don't know who Michael B. Jordan was playing. I don't remember anything about this film. All I remember is that there was this black guy, uh, African accent, if you could call it that, running around with a kitty cat costume. I and and I'm, and, and I, I it was it was it was really just kind of weird like like seeing the, the the positive response I mean seeing all these black people doing the Wakanda sign it was just kind of just weird it was just like confusing I mean okay I mean like I like I mean there's there like a saying saying oh this movie is historically important because you know black people are represented it's like listen wasn't it. Uh, was, wasn't there a great man named Martin Luther King who says, do not judge me by the color of my skin, but by the content of my character? And I can tell you, I did not feel represented in Black Panther. The, whoever the, the, the guy is that plays Black Panther is, he is far, in terms of character, away from me as can be. So I have nothing in common with Black Panther. I have more in common with characters like Bruce Wayne and a few other characters that is how i see myself represented not in black panther so that's number 16 on this list number 15 is spider boy homecoming and yes you heard me right i call him spider boy homecoming because i'm sorry i openly i openly do not like tom holland as as spider-man he looks too young he looks 12 to me um i know that some people are excited for like the next spider-man film i don't even remember what that one was called um and yeah, I mean, the only good thing I can I can say that this movie had was I really liked uh, uh, Michael uh, Mike, Michael Keaton's uh, Vulture. Um, he was the only good thing about this film. Other than that, um, this it just I, I I mean I mean you give Spider Man this AI suit that pretty much takes away from the character and just I've, I've never seen a more watered down version of spider-man and it was upsetting because spider-man is without question like my favorite solo marvel superhero he's he's on par with batman in terms of my overall favorite superhero of all time he has my second favorite rose gallery of villains of all time right below batman and so to actually see an mcu focus spider-man film was just not all that exciting to me and I, I don't even remember much about it but i just remember walking out and feeling somewhat disappointed uh going into number 14 um i picked um avengers uh infinity war uh yeah i i generally just did not really care i mean i don't, I don't know how many years up to that point like okay wait this came out in 2000 in 18 so in the in iron man came out in 2008 so this was 10 years with the films and i i felt like i i feel just this is kind of just a waste it's like you're telling me that this whole thing was about this purple alien guy collecting some magic rocks that that's that's what this is all about really um not impressed uh i will say this the ending i i, I the the ending got me the the ending <laughs> The ending made me laugh. It was so it was so a surreal experience in the theater because everyone was shocked. Like everyone was like having these shocking like experiences like oh my god you're seeing all these beloved characters and they're disappearing into dust and as I was watching this happen I was I was I I was I was trying to hold my laughter. I thought it was funny how they were killing off every single character that we knew was going to have a sequel. Now, had they killed off, like, all the old Avengers, I think the ending would have worked better for me because it's like, okay, I kind of acknowledge the seriousness of the threat, and now the new generation of the Avengers that we're going to have to move forward with have to bring the older generation back. That would have worked out more. But, no, the fact that they killed off everybody that I knew could not be dead, and I knew that Endgame, even though I haven't seen it, half of that film, if not the entire entirety of that film, would have been revolved around bringing them all back for some massive... I don't know CGI fight that I'm guessing happens at the end of Endgame. I I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that's what happens. Um, but yeah, I not not even the fights, not even the visuals really impressed me. But you know, I know I know that a lot of people liked Infinity War, and and that's fine. Um, but I just walked out, and I just 
thought it was just kind of kind of ridiculous. And that takes us to number thirteen, and that is uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Um, another movie that I thought was kind of forgettable. I mean, it was basically the same Avengers. It was the same film as Avengers, except instead of fighting an army of giant lizards, we are now fighting an army of robots. It is the exact same plot. It is like I'm surprised I'm the only one that notices. It's like it's like it's like Avengers one we're fighting an army of giant lizards, and Avengers two we're fighting an army of giant robots, and um, and Infinity War we're fighting an army of lizards again. <laughs> and I don't know what they're fighting in, in Endgame. Maybe maybe it's a mixture of robotic lizards. I I don't, I don't know what they're fighting in, in Endgame. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that that's what I got from a, a, a Age of Ultron. Uh, and that goes into number 12, uh, and that is um, Avengers uh, 2012. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be honest, this was an interesting experience, because when I first saw this film in theaters, I, I actually didn't like it. Um, but it, it, it did eventually kind of not, not necessarily grow on me, but I kind of understood why people liked it so much. Because this is what it took for me to end up kind of like openly thinking that oh, the first Avengers was, was okay. Um, I think about six months after the film came out... Um, uh, my my friend, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say his name, but he loved Avengers and he he could not understand why I didn't like Avengers. So what we did was we got a, we 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 got his copy. We went to his house uh, and we sat down for five hours and we went through the entire film. And like every time there was a problem or something I thought was done, we stopped the movie and we would talk about it for like five or ten minutes. And, I, and this this went from beginning to end. And I was like saying this doesn't make sense. This is dumb. I've read the comic books. This doesn't make sense. This character is out of character. This doesn't make sense. This battle is pointless. It's like it, we, we, we had an active debate. Debate for five hours. This is like, a, I think the movie's like what, a little over two hours long. It took us five hours to get through the film. And we were done. I was like able to kind of like think. It's like, okay, I still don't really like the Avengers. But now that you've explained it to me and we've kind of gone back and forth and I'm kind of starting to see some of your points. I think I can kind of understand why people like it. I still don't really think it's all that great, but it's maybe just not for me. I mean, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rises had just come out that year, so you know I was still very much a more of a Batman fan than an MCU fan. But over time, it's just like okay, I see why people like it so much, and that's perfectly fine with me. And there we have it. So that is number twelve on this list. Going into number eleven. And this is probably the biggest cock tease of, of any MCU film that I've ever seen. And that was Captain America Civil War. You know, they, they should have really changed the title from Civil War to Civil Disagreement because I didn't really see much of Civil War. There was no consequences. Nothing really happened. It, we, I mean, when this movie came out, it was in a weird time. I think this is the same year that Dawn of Justice came out. And it was basically, oh, we're now seeing these two superhero teams go at it. But nothing happened. Like, no one died. I mean, if anyone who's actually read the Civil War storyline, there was actually some serious stakes. There were serious consequences. I mean, when one of their own gets killed, that's serious. I mean, now both sides realizing that this disagreement that they've had has actually caused the death of one of their characters. And so that that, that takes to a whole another level. But that didn't happen in this film. It was just a film that had superheroes fight just for the sake of seeing them fight. There was no clear reason to have them fight. And I personally don't like it when heroes fight. It's kind of boring. Personally, I mean, I don't even like it when to, to see Batman and Superman fight. And they've been doing it for decades. And, and and it just turned into one giant pissing contest with no consequences. Nobody died. I mean, Rhodey supposedly got paralyzed, but he's still walking somehow. So I'm like... It, it it just didn't it it didn't work for me, and everyone was so excited to see Spider Boy show up in the MCU. And if that was okay with you, then fine. But it it it, it just didn't it didn't work for me. I, I I didn't really care much about that fight between the two hero groups. Um. Uh. Yeah. It was just I I I just did not actually care. Uh. And that's number eleven. Um. So now we go into number ten. Um, and, and don't worry, we're, we're, we're about to finish the last of uh, movies that I actually don't really care much about. And number 10 is actually Iron Man 2. This movie was completely forgettable. The only thing I remember about this film is that it had the guy with the whip, and this is the first appearance of, of, of War Machine. Other than that, I honestly, for, 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 the, for, the, 
for the life of me, do not remember what the plot was. I don't remember what was happening with Tony. I don't remember what he was doing. I don't remember, like, w what this was all about. I mean, I think he had, like, that one, like, really cool-looking transformation on the racetrack when the, when the guy with the whip came and came after him. But that's about all I can remember from Iron Man 2. It was just kind of forgettable and the only thing that introduced was was war machine which you know personally i'm not really an iron man fan per se and but yeah just just kind of forgettable uh number nine on my list is ant-man um ant-man was funny um but he he's kind of like shazam in, in a sense um in which i thought the movie was okay and it definitely had some funny moments but i just thought it was forgettable and it wasn't something that i need to see a second time and i haven't seen ant-man since um but you know, we're, we're we're getting to that point. I I would say this is this is officially the point on my list where we're starting to actually get away from movies I don't remember or don't care about to movies that I generally think are actually good and worth watching. And I think that um, Ant Man is kind of the beginning of that list. So that's why it's number nine on my list. Uh, going into number eight uh, is Captain America: The First Avenger. Now I don't really know much about Captain America per se, except you know just when I heard from what, what people say about him uh but i i generally thought that uh first avengers was a good origin story for captain america for someone who didn't know much about uh, uh captain america i i understood the, the whole, whole concept behind what red skull was doing uh, i like the introduction of uh that cube or wh whatever they were using to create their their weapons that the, the the nazis but technically red skull was kind of like trying to go against the nazis in a sense which was confusing and i, I thought the ending was a little bit touching how uh you know uh steve rogers was was getting frozen how he had to go down off that ship i, th I thought that was a pretty pretty good moment and that's why it's number eight on this list going into number seven is really really going to surprise a lot of people because uh, i've actually seen this a number of times and it, it, I actually really, really enjoyed this film a lot more than I think a lot of people would expect. And that is actually 2008's uh, The Incredible Hulk. Um, I thought Edward Norton was a, was a, was a great Bruce Banner. I, and I thought that action scene with the military in the middle of the film, I thought that was great. And I thought that the, the throwdown with uh, uh, Abomination at the end was, was awesome. I, that's definitely, in my opinion, like a top five favorite MCU fight. Um, I thought it was great. Um, it felt evenly matched. I thought that the use of characters was all right. I thought the use of General Ross wasn't too overdone. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised how many people really did not like this film, but I, I, I really liked it. Um, and even the little tease of the of the Avengers at the end when, when Tony Stark showed up, um, I thought it was great. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a great film, but I thought it was a, I thought it was a good film. I've definitely seen The Incredible Hulk uh, a number of times and still remember it pretty well. And that's number seven. Now we're going into the last six. Now, when we get to this point, everything from six to one, these are great films. I love these films. They're awesome. I support them all the way. I've seen them multiple times. I own them. I back them up. They're awesome. So number six on my list is actually Guardians of the Galaxy. Very, very surprising. Very surprising. Um, uh, I, I have to give uh, the, 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 the team and the crew, I, I got to give everyone who worked on this movie serious props because to bring a team of, of of heroes that i had up to this point had never heard of and to give me that kind of film that I, you know it had great action it had great acting i thought everyone part of the team had great chemistry with each other they had their moment to shine i thought it was funny when it needed to be funny i thought the action scenes were just great i think it had a good amount of heart i this movie just came out of nowhere and surprised the hell out of me and, and i didn't know what to expect going in but uh yeah, I really, really enjoyed the first Guardians of the Galaxy from 2014. And that leads us all the way into the number five spot on my list, which is actually the second Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 from 2017. This one was significantly better. And I think that out of any film on this list, this is the one that I had the strongest emotional connection to. Um... The ending had me at the end. The, like, it's, it's rare that, that this happens. This does not happen. I can say like the number of films that has been able to do this to me can be counted on probably like two hands. But the ending of the film of Aven of, of volume two did have did have me in, in, in some tears. Um, this was like about within a year after my dad had just passed away so the ending kind of got to me and so the whole story of you know sons and fathers and wanting to have that fatherly connection and then you know it it, it got it, it got to me um and i saw this at least three times in theaters uh and i i think the first time i saw it with my mom and then the other two times i saw it by myself uh but yeah this one was really 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 great definitely the most emotionally connected film out of the mcu so really really great job marvel um 
And that takes us into number four, which also has a uh, kind of emotional connection, and that is Doctor Strange. Now, Doctor Strange, I think, is without question the most visually impressive MCU film to date. Now, it also kind of helps that its visual style takes inspiration from the movie Inception. And Inception, to this day, is still my favorite movie of all time, across just all films that have ever been made. Inception is my absolutely favorite film. So the fact that Doctor Strange kind of took inspiration from it, and it, with its use of visuals, I thought was absolutely incredible. I thought that um, Benedict Cumberbatch's performance as Doctor Strange was awesome. I thought his use of powers was very visually impressive. I liked how they actually used it, because Doctor Strange is a really, really confusing character to actually get right, but I thought the film actually did it perfectly. Um, and I thought how he dealt with the main villain was very, very clever. Um, probably the most clever use of how to use a small element in order to take down an enemy that you technically could not beat head to head. I thought how he handled it was just just brilliant. And it's even more impressive, and it, it has much more of a connection to me because uh, this was my dad's favorite superhero film. This was the one. This was. I, I do believe this is my dad's favorite uh, superhero of all time. That this was his favorite, and he passed away three months before this film came out. Um, and just when I, when I you know when, when I watched these trailers of him, I had never seen him so excited. So he really he really wanted to see this film, and now I understand why he liked this character so much. So I understand like even though I'm not the biggest Doctor Strange fan, I could definitely understand why Doctor Strange is a really really standout character, and I really really like this film. Um, I'm on the fence of whether or not I would even consider seeing a second Doctor Strange film, but uh, moving forward, I don't really want to see any more MCU f movies, but if I had to pick one that I would be willing to put my pride aside and go see in the theaters, it absolutely would be uh, Doctor Strange, so that's why it's number four on my list. Going into number three is a movie that I was very, very surprised I ended up enjoying this as much as I did, despite the fact that I absolutely did not like the first two installments, and that is actually Thor Ragnarok. Wow, did they manage to turn this character around. I, I don't know how this how this happened, but yeah, um, I'm not sure. I, I don't read much Thor comic books, but um, I, I thought that just the humor and the story that they were trying to tell in this film was, was just absolutely great. It's definitely my favorite Thor out of the three. I actually think this is my best performance I've seen of Thor. I mean, I, I didn't really care too much about uh, him in Infinity War, and I don't know what they do with him in Endgame, but this is definitely my favorite use of Thor as a character, and I liked his interactions with the rest of his team. I thought the use of Hulk was hilarious. Um, I thought Loki was not overly done. He had his, you know, he had his purpose, and he, had his, and he had his badass moment, and I actually thought Helena was actually pretty threatening. Um, I really hope, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure if she'd ever come back, but it's. It, I would not be surprised if somehow she came back. It's just a shame that the ending of this film is kind of ruined by the beginning of Infinity War. I think it just kind of sucks after everything that they went through in this film. Uh, but yeah, I, I really, really liked Thor Ragnarok uh, from 2017. And that takes me to number two. Uh, th these next two films are incredible films. These are definitely top tier films. These two are absolutely in my top 10 favorite superhero films of all time. Number two, surprisingly so, because I don't like the character at all. And that is the very first Iron Man from, 20, uh, from 2008. This started the MCU before there was an MCU. This is before Disney took control. And this really did set a new pace of uh, start a new era of superhero films. Because this was the same year that The Dark Knight came out. And I still consider The Dark Knight to be the greatest superhero film I think I will ever see in my life. But this did a great job of telling a different type of story, doing it in a different type of style, and telling it to a point that it didn't feel like the characters were so overpowered. I mean, Tony Stark did feel very, very human. He felt vulnerable. I mean, he had he he had he had a, a real, real realization. And I think that that was significantly lost over the course of the films. Uh, but uh, even though I personally am not a fan of Iron Man as a character, because I think he's just a horrible character in the comic books, but this is the best interpretation that I've ever seen Iron Man be in any media. Um... So that's why I really liked it that much. And it's 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 crazy that this is the beginning <laughs> of the character. And he would only go downhill from there. Um, but that's why it's number two on this list. And that leads me to number one. And by far my favorite MCU film of all time. Which I think is an absolutely top five greatest comic book movie of all time. And that is Captain America The Winter Soldier. Holy hell. This movie is incredible i would even go as so far as to say it is the most 
it is the only MCU film that doesn't feel like an MCU film. It, and it, it's crazy to say that because it, the way, it, the style, the structure, everything about this film, it feels so grounded that it it it, it, it works. And I and I like those type of, of comic book films that that don't that don't feel so grand and aren't just they're, they're not they're not overblown with CGI and massive battles. It it can be you can you can have a really really great comic book movie that's very very small very very contained feels very very small but it feels very very believable and i actually totally bought that with captain america i thought steve rogers was really at the top of his game in this film i thought the introduction of the winter soldier had a lot of personality even though he didn't really talk all that much i thought the use of bucky and steve rogers i loved all of their scenes together um i surprisingly liked how uh how they use black widow and i don't really like black widow all that much um and i thought that the the, the back the, the background story that they were trying to tell with Nick Fury trying to say that, you know, we're going to take out threats before they happen. That's a very serious issue that we are dealing with today. Um, and it, it, and it, just, it just felt the most believable. And I think that this is the most believable that the MCU ever got for me. And this is by far just, it's not just a great film. It's an incredible film. I've, I, I said this in my review years ago that I easily would place this better than Man of Steel. And I would easily place this better than the Dark Knight Rises. It's still not nowhere close to the Dark Knight, but I would definitely put it well over Dark Knight Rises. This was an incredible film. I'm happy this movie was made. I'm happy I've seen this film probably the most out of any MCU films. And even though most of the MCU I just don't really care about, either I don't like it or I don't want to see it or I don't remember it, but this is the one film that is undeniably an absolutely top-tier grade A comic book movie one of the greatest of all time which is why captain america winter soldier 2014 is my favorite entry in the mcu and with that that basically ends my list um i'm not going to ask anybody to share their thoughts of me and if everyone else in the comments down below because they have been disabled but i really hope that you know uh, the amount of negativity hasn't really put you off my channel because you know, you guys voted for this, and you guys know how I feel about the MCU as a whole, so you guys kind of asked for this. So, that is going to be the end of my list. I hope, on some level, you guys at least respect my ranking of the list, and, you know, maybe you won't unsubscribe, but, yeah, um... Yeah, that's basically all I gotta say about this. Um, I, I would like to give a shout-out to the person who actually, um... And ask for this idea. I I somehow lost your name, and I feel bad about that. But if you, you know who you are, let me know, and I'll be sure to give you a shout out in the comments down. Well, I forget. There, don't, there won't be any comments, but uh, <laughs> you know who you are. So yeah, this 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 video is for you. So with that out of the way, I'd like to thank everybody who saw this uh, video. Hopefully, you won't come after me with uh, torches and pitchforks, and uh, I will uh, see you in the next video.